This is Support is Sexy, episode 405, with Allison Scrutchens, CEO of Forward Planning LLC and author of the book, How to Be an Entrepreneur 101. Welcome to Support is Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I bring you inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and lessons to help you take your business to the next level. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. I'm excited to have you here. It just would not be the same without you. And if you're listening to this in real time, happy Monday. I'm super excited about our show today. But I want to ask you, if you are a woman entrepreneur, creative leader, consultant, coach, anyone out there who wants to get your voice out there to the world, I want you to consider podcast guesting. And if you want to know how to be an unforgettable podcast guest who gets invited back again and again, I want you to download my free gift, How to Be an Unforgettable Podcast Guest at girlonpodcastgift.com. That's girlonpodcastgift.com, a free guide on how to be a guest that is unforgettable for all the right reasons. Now, on today's show, we have a great guest, Miss Allison Scrutchens, and Allison is a serial entrepreneur who is also author of the book, How to Be an Entrepreneur 101, which I really enjoyed reading. And in this episode, we go through some of the rules that Allison has outlined based on her experience as a woman who is a millennial and an entrepreneur who started very early on in her career, knowing that she wanted to create a business and build generational wealth. So some of the things that we talk about in this episode, this one I really love, why you shouldn't share your big ideas with small-minded people, why you also should be weary of people who just want to quote unquote, pick your brain, what to keep in mind before you quit your day job and why everybody can't come. That's one of our episodes on the Support a Sexy podcast and Allison discusses it in detail here with the perfect reminder. So I know you're going to enjoy this episode, tons of great tips. So now without further ado, Allison Scrutchens. So, Allison, thank you so much for joining us for an episode of Support is Sexy. I'm excited to chat with you. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be a part of this episode. Thank you. So our first question, when did you first fall in love with entrepreneurship? Well, I think that I first fell in love with entrepreneurship when I was in high school. I wrote down three different businesses that I wanted to have one day, and um, I thought about businesses that would be open 24 hours and would always have customers. So I came up with a hotel, a laundromat, and a car wash. (laughs) And from that moment forth, it was just a dream of mine to one day be a business owner. I just did not realize how soon it would come. Now, what was it about you? Because you said in high school, right? Mm-hmm. What was it about you or your in the environment that you grew up in or what you witnessed maybe as a child that made you even think that you wanted to be an entrepreneur at that young age? You know, I honestly don't know because entrepreneurship just recently became a fad word. And it was something that I just knew I wanted to own businesses one day. And I've always been ambitious. I've had a job since I was 15, two or three at the same time since I was 15. And I've just always worked and always hustled and was chasing financial stability. So I knew that I wanted to own businesses, but entrepreneurship is something that was like, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur. That definitely didn't come until later down the line. It was more so only, right? You're so right. The word now has a lot of uh, heat, if you will. But the the (laughs) idea of owning your own business was really what it was for people who did desire that. And usually I find people, a lot of people who did want to be entrepreneurs or open their own businesses, at least a lot of people that I know from uh, a while ago, nobody recent, but it was more so a, this is the way I'm going to make money, or this is the survival thing for my family, or this is, it Mm -hmm. it wasn't sexy, in other words. 
Exactly. <laughs> it's right now they're selling it like it's a dream and it's all peaches and cream and it's just a yellow brick road. And there's so much more that comes with entrepreneurship. And so now a lot of people are getting a hold onto it. And I think it's a great thing because I think that entrepreneurship is the true only way to achieve generational wealth. So I'm happy that we're all hopping on board with it. I just want it to be more realistic as to what it really takes to be an entrepreneur. So tell us a little bit about your background and where you grew up. You're from Chicago, right? Yes, I am um, just a woman from the south side of Chicago. Yes. Or as they like to say, a kid from the Chicago scene. Um, And I love my city. I've been born and raised here. The only time I didn't live here is when I went away for college. And um, growing up in Chicago, it um, is truly, truly an eye opener. And um, what I can say is that I saw my surroundings and the things that were around me. And I chose that I did not want to be a product of my environment. And most people don't know how to make that choice because that's all they know. So that's what they stick to. But, you know, growing up on the South Side where your family, friends um, are either sad to say being killed or going to jail or on drugs, you know, you have to make a decision. Is that the route that you want to take or do you want to go another route? And so I just decided to to be um, ambitious and 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 focus on my dreams and how can I achieve them? Did you have examples of that ambition in your life, even if not in your immediate family? Um, honestly, as, as my mother would say, I'm God's child because she doesn't know where it came from. <laughs> mm-hmm. I really didn't have um, too many examples of it. I just knew that I wanted more. Um, even my awesome mother, um, growing up on the South side, I was considered in the community was called a crack baby because my mother was on drugs up until two weeks of, um, me being born. And, you know, thank God she is now 25 years sober, but, um, it was something that I knew how people looked at me and viewed me. And I just really wanted to prove them wrong. And, um, I'm truly blessed. I am a miracle. I am totally fine. Nothing was wrong with me when I was born. And I just used that. And I, I kind of still use it to this day as fuel to continue to chase my dreams. Were you born with um, any kind of symptoms or anything at that time? I know a lot of babies during that that were born with those kinds of conditions um, experience. Either they were premature or had some other kind of medical issues, but it sounds like you came through strong. Yeah, um, that's why my mom calls me God's child because there was not a single thing wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was born maybe two weeks early, but that's mm-hmm. not considered premature. Right. Um, I was I was a healthy baby girl, and not a single thing was wrong with me. And you know, I've 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 known people who have had that issue and have grown up with issues and you know different problems that they have to face because of it. But I thank God, you know, for his his miraculous blessings on my life that I was okay despite, you know, what had happened while I was um still in the womb. So was your mom a part of your life as you grew up? She was. She was. Um she got sober when I was about four or five. And um, you know, just seeing her being able to kick that habit and now she doesn't do anything. You know, she doesn't do mm-hmm. anything. She doesn't drink, she doesn't smoke, she doesn't do anything. And she's just focused and um, focused on her relationship with God and how she can give back to others. She's currently a case manager. So she is mentoring and empowering other women who are battling the same addictions that she had. And um, allowing her to just seeing her is is really what allowed me to to be as great as I am because I feel as though I can overcome anything. You know, your past does not define your future. It's about what you're doing next, not necessarily what you've been through. And what do you think it's like for her to see what you're doing now? I think um, she is she is truly amazed with me. Um, you know, each and every day I talk to her, I tell her how much I love her, how much I appreciate her. And um, she she's just she's in all, you know, and I, I don't see it how she sees it. But I know that she is grateful that you know, everything was good with me. And I went down the road that I went down because even when people ask her, you know, she just says, you know, that's Allison. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. what 
Allison, you know, was born to be and born to do and nothing was going to stop her. And so she is a great, great, great person that I look up to. And she just shows me that, you know, all you can do is move forward and allow yourself to not be defined by your past. Did you um, have any siblings or do you have any siblings? Yes, I have a sister on my mother's side and then I have a sister and two brothers on my father's side. But I am the baby. You are the baby. (laughs) So am I. It's good to be the baby. Yes. (laughs) You get everything your way. Exactly. Now, I read that when you got your first job after college, you realized pretty quickly that the nine to five wasn't for you. Yeah, you know, it was interesting. (laughs) So what brought you then to, well, first of all, where did you go to college? And then what brought you to that decision after you started working? So I went to college here in Illinois at Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. I am a Saluki. Um, And then I got an undergrad in social work from there. After that, I immediately went to grad school at University of Illinois at Chicago And I got a master's in public administration. Now, the same time that I started grad school is when I started my first job after college. So I was working a full time job and I was going to grad school full time. And um, the year that I actually graduated grad school was the year where I realized that that was no longer for me. It was very disheartening because I worked for a chamber of commerce and a black community. And it was just sad to see the lack of resources and education that the business owners and nonprofits had access to and the things that they were unaware of that were available to them to help grow their business and just create that economic development that our communities need. And um, one day I, I was just sad walking into work. Um, it literally brought my spirit down to walk into the building and I did not know what to do. I did not know what was next. I just knew that I probably wouldn't be in that position for too much longer. And I said a prayer and a specific prayer asking for guidance and God told me to let it go. So I put in my two weeks notice and I quit (laughs) a week after I quit. I actually got my first contract with a nonprofit, helping them with their business, incorporation, mission, vision, bylaws, things of that nature. And um, it was just a one-off contract. So it wasn't like, you know, any real stable income. Um, And I was actually still applying for jobs. And um, either I was overqualified or the new position was coming or I went on two, three interviews. And there were so many things that I was doing to try to find employment, but then I got another contract with another nonprofit to help them and grow their um, organization and just to advise them. And long story short, four months later, forward planning was born. And um, I figured that the reason I couldn't find a job is because it wasn't meant for me to find one. It was meant for me to create this business that is a full service consulting and management company. And we assist nonprofits, small business owners, fellow entrepreneurs, and we help them basically accomplish their goals and take their business to the next level. So when you got the inspiration, if you will, to quit your job and give your or give your two weeks notice, you didn't think that at that time, from what I understand, I'm going to quit and start my business. You were thinking it was just that job that was the issue. And the, exactly what you were witnessing and, and, and being um, exposed to, like you said, the lack of resources and those kinds of things. So you were thinking of getting a job elsewhere and then the business sort of developed on its own. Exactly. Um, Because I I had a great work ethic. Um, I'm the type of person that anything I put my name behind or do, I definitely have to execute because I like to say don't drop the ball. Um, And so I was well known in the city for the work that I had done. Um, I had put on this huge summer festival event with 10,000 people and great mainstream acts and zero acts of violence on the south side of Chicago. And so there were a lot of people familiar with my work. So in the process of me looking for jobs, I was getting contracts. And and I was like, okay, well, it must obviously be meant for me to create a business so that I can continue to bring on more clientele and help create economic development within my city. 
So that's good because I was that was one of my questions was how uh, did you know what kind of business to start? But you're a good example for people listening at that you may not know exactly what kind of business to start, but you can look at your experiences, things that you've done or created, Mm -hmm. what your uh, background is, even though it's not exactly aligned with your your degrees. But I'm sure they played a role in you knowing how to manage some of these things and some of these people Mm because you have to work with a lot of people. So that's a good example for people to listen to just that that's possible also. Yes. You know, the the fact of the matter is that entrepreneurship is not just a straight line. It's so wiggly. It's so many ups and downs. It's so many failures, high moments, low moments. And you what I like to say is you just have to find what it is exactly that you love to do and then find ways to make money doing it. Um, And that's what I did. I love to empower people. I love to work with people. I love to help them grow within whether it's themselves personally, their business, their brand, you know, and that is what I ended up doing with my business with every single person that I take on. I'm empowering them through some service that I'm providing. Now, when you left the um, full-time position, were you living off on your own at that time? Did you have other responsibilities to think out? Just, again, for those listening who might be in a situation where their job is making them uh, sad or depressed or they feel like they can't take it anymore and they want to move on, wondering what were the things that you had to consider um, before you let go? So my main thing that I think is most important to me, at least, is having a roof over my head. So when I decided that I was quitting my job, I wanted to make sure that I had some type of stability in housing. And I was renting a condo that I was paying way too much money for. (laughs) And so um, I needed to let that condo go. And when I decided that quitting is what I wanted to do, I then had a conversation with my mother about us buying a three unit building for our family. And so, um, again, working towards that generational wealth, why are we paying, you know, mortgages and rents all over the city when we can pay one mortgage and all each have separate living spaces and apartments? And so um, it took a while to get her to get on board with me. But um, she eventually understood what I was trying to do for the family because um, my grandparents were getting up in age and my grandfather was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and his dementia was getting worse. So it was like, well, what can we do to make sure that we're all able to support each other? And um, when I decided to quit my job, I, I, you know, basically convinced her that this building is something we should do. And I used my savings to close on the building. And that was my stability as far as housing was concerned. So the more the rent that I was paying in my condo is, you know, just relatively cheaper than my mortgage here. But we have three separate apartments in a family building. Mm-hmm. And so it allowed me to be able to create something for my family that we will always have. And, you know, eventually, it, whether we want to rent it, sell it, it can bring income and gives us the stability that we need. So I think that if you're depressed and you're ready to quit, you just have to figure out how you can set up some type, some type of stability because your income is gone every two weeks. That deposit won't be in your account. You know, so what are you going to do in the meantime to make sure that you're not struggling? And I think it's important that if you can hold out on that nine to five, just build your side hustle while you can. And then when it's time to quit, allow your side hustle to become your main income. Excellent. Great advice. And you are still in that building now. Do you all still own that building? Yes, ma'am. We are still in this building. Um, I am on the top floor. My grandmother and grandfather are on the first floor. And then my mother is in the basement. That is great. So smart. And people, a lot of uh, families generations ago did that in New York, especially in areas like Brooklyn. And now so many are having a hard time buying places because they're so expensive. So it's so smart Mm -hmm. that you did that when you did. How many years ago was that? Four years ago? Four years ago. Yep. Four years ago. (laughs) And what part of Chicago is it in? South side, of course. South I'm a side. South side girl. You're a South Side girl, <laughs> like Michelle Obama. So we I love have it. to stay on the South Side, I of love course. It. That's great. Um, and the beauty is that so, and and this is how God works. The beauty is when I bought the building, um, and I had just started for planning. I ended up getting a contract with the alderman in the area to be his campaign manager for his campaign that was coming up. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, the community I had just bought the building in. So he was familiar with my work and my work ethic and, you know, my 
um, the results that I give to my clients. But then it was just also a plus that I had just moved into his ward. So, you know, that's why I say you you just got to step out on faith and trust that everything else will fall into place. And do the work. Because the work is definitely a part of it. The fact that you've mentioned um, many times your reputation and how it obviously precedes you and the good work that you've done. And that's the thing that's really um, or or among the other things that's really helping you continue to keep going. It sounds like and getting it sounds like most of your clients come through referrals. Well, um, either referrals or word of mouth. You know, because uh, as big as Chicago is, it's very small. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And if you run in a certain circle, everybody in that circle knows everybody. And so um, the different clients that I have been able to have over the years are either somebody that was referred to me or somebody that is just familiar with what I've done. You know, if I throw out an event name or something, they're like, oh, you were the coordinator. Or if I throw out a client, they're like, oh, you were the strategic development um, consultant that was working with them. So it's just a matter of being able to live up to what it is that you say you want to do. When you decide to become an entrepreneur, you have to understand you are going to work harder than you ever worked in your life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that nine to five was good. You know, you came to work at nine, you went home at five, but no, honey, this is a 24 seven thing. And I'm constantly up working and constantly up trying to make sure that I deliver because again, I don't want to drop the ball. I don't want a negative review. I don't want any gossip going around saying bad things about me. I always want to deliver as far as my business is concerned, because that is my only source of income. That is my reputation. And that is how I will continue to grow. What would you say is your primary um, service or offering to your clients? I know you have a variety of things, but what is the main thing that people come to you for? Event planning and strategic development. Mm -hmm. So event planning is my heart and soul. Um, It stresses most people out, but I can kind of do it in my sleep. And um, I've planned events for, you know, as low as 50 people to as many as 23,000 people. And um, it is something that I truly love to do. And, um, you know, that is really something that I'm known for in Chicago. But then I also have other clients who I've just done strategic development with them as far as planning, you know, one year plan of actions versus where you want to be in three years, creating your mission, your vision, getting your logo, your rebranding, getting your website together and things of that nature. And you work with them on a monthly or on a contract basis, I should say. Yeah. So every client is different. Um, It just depends on on what they need. You know, when I first started um, off, when I didn't have for planning, getting those those contracts that I was getting here in there were one off contracts, you know, so it would be like thirty five hundred, five thousand. But it's just, you know, a one time fee. You get paid at the beginning when you start the contract and then you get the final payment at the end when it's completed. But then, you know, I was moving on and growing to monthly retainers. Mm -hmm. And um, that was allowing me the stability that I needed within my business to then, you know, I can hire an assistant. I can hire a project manager and we can make sure that we're delivering for these clients. And it's not all on me. Excellent. Now, I know you've written a book called How to Be an Entrepreneur 101, which I received. Thank you to you and to Renee for that. Yes, yes. (laughs) Did you enjoy it? I did. I did. And the book shares um, rules for becoming a successful entrepreneur based on your experience, of course. So I wanted to go over a few of the rules from the book. We're not going to give it all away, but a few of the (laughs) rules and the chapters. I love the um, titles and just get you to talk about some of them and give us some insight on them. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I'm so happy you enjoyed it. Yes. Now, rule number one, you are the one and only factor that determines how successful your business will be. What does that mean? It means that most people fail in entrepreneurship because they don't believe in their brand enough to convince others to do the same. Mm. So if you don't believe in your brand, how can somebody else believe in you? You know, if you're not your number one salesperson, shaking hands, sturdy, looking in eyes and telling them who you are and what you do, you can't expect the next person to give you a nice introduction as good as you're going to do for yourself. So understand that when you choose to be an entrepreneur, you will only be successful based upon how much you're invested in it, based upon, you know, what you're giving to the to the business and how you want the business to evolve. And, you know, it's just a matter of being 
you know, one of my favorite um, quotes is Invictus. And it's, um, you are the master of your, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my journey. And the fact of the matter is that you have to understand that you are the only person that will determine whether or not your business will be successful. So either you're going to put the work in or you're going to drop the ball and just make announcements and not allow your bank account to reflect those announcements you're making. Mm. Now, is one of the things too to keep in mind about that, let me know what you think, is one of the things to keep in mind about that is that your business doesn't have to be perfect for you to be out there doing the things that you mentioned, shaking hands, telling the right people about it and that kind of thing. Like of waiting for it not. to get to a certain point before you do those things. You can do that right away. Yes, that because again, if you're waiting to a certain point, that means that you don't believe in yourself just yet. Mm -hmm. You know, so selling yourself in the beginning, I teach my students um, that no matter what, be able to give that elevator pitch and allow that elevator pitch, whether you have a website up and going or you you have the tools that you need, but you need to be able to sell yourself in that elevator pitch. And it can be honestly what you're projecting and speaking into existence. It doesn't have to be where you currently are. But how are you going to allow others to see what it is that you say you want to do? You know, so I'm big on speaking it into existence, letting the universe know that you're ready for it. And I think that is very important for you to go ahead and take that leap of faith and start just exactly where you are. You don't have to be perfect, but you need to at least get started because then you won't have to worry about nothing. I promise that you are going to fail, but allow that failure to teach you the lesson and allow it to help you move forward. All right. So rule number two, or actually, this was the title of chapter number two. I just really like this one. Don't ask yourself why me. Ask yourself who better than me. Right. So, um, you know, we, we sit at home all day long and we think about um, how Steve Jobs did it or how Oprah did it or how Jay-Z did it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you can do it, too. <laughs> they are not far fetched. They are regular human beings that bleed just like you bleed, that just work hard and put the effort in to chase their dreams. So don't question the journey and the purpose that, you know, is on your life, just get up and start doing the work. But we allow fear to hold us back. And fear is really something that is why most people are sitting at home with million dollar dreams and million dollar businesses that they're not bringing to life. So in that moment, I encourage people to don't ask yourself, why me? Ask yourself who better? Because I can do this and I can execute and I can be as successful as I want to be. I was having a conversation with someone, um, I can't remember how long ago it was or even who it was. That's because I have a bad memory. But um, <laughs> I was having a conversation, though, about what people call haters or I say dream killers. There's a lot of different names for it. But I find or I have just come to the conclusion that a lot of times people take a negative stance on whatever you're doing because of a couple of reasons. Either they know that they're capable in some way of doing the same thing and they're afraid to do it or just haven't made a mm -hmm. decision to do it. Or they know that it's outside of their zone of genius, but they're not focusing on their zone of genius. They're focusing on mm -hmm. what this other person is doing and they're upset about that. Not that I'm making excuses for someone to be negative, but just to kind of, um, for me, it's almost compassion unless the person is being, you know, violent towards you or, or super rude toward you. But otherwise, it's just, right. you know what, there's a reason that this person feels so angry about what I'm doing and up to. Usually it's because of those other reasons. What do you think? I totally agree. I really, really agree. The reality is that people are unhappy with themselves. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they can't be happy for you. They can't support you. One of my favorite things is you can't tell big dreams to a small minded person. Right. Because they can't even fathom what you're talking about. They're like, what? How do you do that? How would you do that? And and it's it's it just shows you who should be growing with you. You know, some people are meant to be in your life for seasons. Some people are meant to be there forever. And everybody's not going to make it to forever with you. And it's hard to let some people go. But when I say when 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 people show you themselves, you, you have to pay attention to it and not ignore them. Um, I had to get to a point personally where I stopped sharing my good news with some people because they weren't happy for me. 
Was that difficult and to do? It was, you know, and it's, it's difficult to do because as an entrepreneur, we're going to battle with loneliness because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's That's lonely right. at the top, <laughs> as Flash would say. <laughs> it's lonely on <laughs> the way, too. Right. It's lonely on the way. It's lonely at the top. We battle with anxiety. We battle with depression. We're always thinking we're not enough. We're not doing enough. And I got sad when the reaction that I wanted from some people I didn't receive. And I think that's when you have to choose to be your own cheerleader. And in that moment, it's like, dang, I got some great news. Oh, my goodness. Look at this opportunity. It's a national platform. Is this is that. And man, I really don't have nobody to share it with, mm. you know, but that's where you have to choose your self-care things. Go have a drink with yourself. Go treat yourself to dinner. Write it in your journal. Blog about it. Choose what it is that you need to do. Allow social media to be your outlet if that's your choice. But you have to figure out who's for you and who's not for you. Because, yes, they can't be able to fathom what you're talking about. But that doesn't mean it can't be happy for you. Right. That doesn't mean it can't be excited for you. You know, so when they show you who they are, it's, it's up to you to ignore the signs. But everybody isn't going to be there with you on this journey. And it, it may be somebody who you've had around since childhood that you have to not necessarily let go. I do cut people off. <laughs> right. That's why I always say but, everybody can't come. People are at right. different stages of their journeys. Journeys look different for everybody. You can't waste time worrying about why not why this person won't support you, which I've gotten caught up in before. It's just, you know what? Got to move on. Exactly. And, you know, we may get back on, on, on track right. five years like you said, from now. Seasons. Right. But right now I'm focused. Right. You exactly. know, and, and I'm trying to accomplish these goals. I'm trying to, you know, check these things off of my, my bucket list. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to be a new level of myself. I love to, like I love to say I will the, this time next year. I promise I won't be the same person. Mm -hmm. I'm the, going to be totally new. Totally new. Uh, one of the things I love that you did say, too, though, is that okay, if you tell these people and they are not able to celebrate you in the way that you would like to feel celebrated, you can still go out and have a drink with yourself or celebrate mm -hmm. yourself or write in your journal or post it or whatever you have to do. You didn't say just keep it to yourself, which sometimes people say. It's, no, find another way to still celebrate it. That thing is still wonderful, even if the people that you thought might support it don't in that moment. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because again, they may not understand like uh, they got small minds. So you understand how big it is. And they're just like, oh, she's doing something else. <laughs> right. She's on some you other know? stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, congrats. And, right. and you know, for me, I've been I've been blessed to, to be able to achieve so much, you know, at a young age and, and within my business being four years old and and all of that. And I, I've, I have had a lot of big moments. And sometimes people can't be happy for your big moments because you're walking in your purpose and they're not walking in theirs yet. But they could yet. Oh, that's so good, Allison. Yes, I was just going to say, but they could. That's what we're going to help yeah. them as much as we can, but not let them be anchors for us. We need engines mm -hmm. right now. All I right. like that. Yes, someone <laughs> told me that. Watch out. But know the difference between your anchors and your engines. And your anchors could be people who love you without oh, them even realizing that. it. Yes. Who said that? I think it was Michelle Villalobos. Yes, one of the guests on the show. All right, rule number four. Your business must provide a solution to a societal issue. If not, there is no need for it. Yeah. You you know, you got a lot of people out here creating the same businesses. Mm. The same businesses, the same nonprofits, the same brands, the same ideas. And something that I teach to my students is, what is your niche? What is it that you bring to the table that nobody else can bring to the table? And how are you going to make sure that you execute it so excellently that everybody's sharing the news about what you do and who you are? And you have to solve an issue within society in order for it to have longevity. Because if not, it may just be a temporary business. You know, right now you you're you're providing a service that is only needed in 2018 when we have to figure out an issue or, you know, a solution that is going to be needed for the next 50 years. And if you don't have that societal issue, then your business may not have the longevity that you seek. So we have to figure out who we're serving, what is the problem that we're solving, 
And then what is our special solution? The special sauce is what I like to say Mm -hmm. that nobody else has that only you came up with and that you're executing and implementing to to be able to empower the population of people that your business will serve. Do you also think that um, knowing your core values or deciding on your business's core values is important, an important part of that as well, so that you don't stray too far away from what your, I guess, intention or mission is? Yes, it is so important to understand who your business is serving, what are your values and what are some things that you want to accomplish? I ask people, okay, what are some year one goals versus where you want to be in year three versus where you want to be in year five? Versus where you want to be in year 10. I'm a big planner. Mm -hmm, I see. (laughs) So I want you to think long term. You know, you're not just creating this to be creating something, something temporary. That's like a get rich quick scheme, right? You want something that is going to give you some financial stability and that hopefully you can pass down to generations to come. And so it's just a matter of you figuring out what it is and who your business will serve and how the society is currently having this problem and how at the end of the day, ultimately, you have the best solution for it and then merge them to be able to become a successful business. All right. Now, rule number five, this is one of my favorites. Surround yourself with nothing but the best, only MVPs allowed. So now (laughs) what are the MVPs in this case? Yes. So um, I define MVPs in my book as most valuable people. And also, I like to say that they are meetings that value your purpose. I love that. So, (laughs) yes, you know, we we live in a time where everybody wants to go to lunch. Everybody wants to have tea. Everybody wants to roll. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Your brain. I am losing money while you are picking my brain. (laughs) I could be working for a client. I could be signing a a new contract. And so the MVPs, the meetings that value your purpose, also run into something else that I like to say that we should only be having money meetings. <laughs> mm. So a money meeting is something that either we're talking about making money together, we're signing the contract to make some money together, or we're making a plan that will eventually allow us to make some money together. Because picking my brain doesn't do anything for me. You know, you may see some value for it. And I, I give back to people all the time. I have plenty of mentees and I do a lot of volunteer work. So I give back in different ways. But as far as picking my brain, you know, now you're cutting into my bottom line. Mm-hmm. And I, so go ahead. No, sorry. I was just going to say I'm glad you mentioned about having mentees and those kinds of things, because sometimes people think, oh, well, you're supposed to get why well, I can't say what people think, but there might be this perception that if you're saying things like what you're saying about MVPs and meetings that value your um, your purpose, that you're saying you don't have time for mentorship or you don't have time to support other people. And that's not what it is. It's making the best. I see it as making the best use of your time. Yes. And and so it runs with the the nothing but the best. Right. Because that support system and the people that you have supporting you, I like to say support your own. You know, I, I have been able to, to be surrounded by amazing individuals in the city who are movers and shakers, but they come out and support me because I support them. And we are surrounding ourselves with a great group of people who are actually doing things and and game changers. And so when you are surrounded by nothing but the best, you have nothing but positive energy around you. You don't have um, anybody bringing you down, you know, with their drama or what's not right in their life or how they're not walking in their purpose. Like I said, when they're ready, they will join you. But right now I have to protect my peace. I have to focus on my journey. And and something people don't want to admit is that to be a successful entrepreneur, you honestly have to be selfish and crazy. Yes, you are crazy. <laughs> yes, it's a different kind of crazy. It. Exactly. Surround <laughs> you yourself with people who selfish. support that. Yeah. And and they know, OK, you know, no, there's no going out to the bar tonight because Allison got a deadline, mm-hmm. you know, and she's focused on this. And maybe I can catch up with her next week, you know, and, and if you have friends who are upset at your hustle. Those are not your friends Mm -hmm. because they should be supporting your hustle. Girl, I see you. I understand you don't got time for me. Like my best friend, um, I'm the mother to her. I'm the godmother to her kids. And, you know, I, I feel so bad sometimes because I'm not around as much as I want to. Or like this month, I'm going to be traveling to Florida on my godson's birthday. And I'm like, you're going to want to kill me because I'm sorry I can't be there. And she's like, why would I want to kill you? 
you are, you know, walking in your purpose. You are in your glory. Handle your business. Get it done. And that is the type of people that you need supporting you because they understand that, man, I see her shining and happy in what she's doing as far as her business is concerned. And I need to support her in it. And, you know, when I say being selfish, that doesn't mean that you just use people. You also have to give back, you know, so I make time, but I also need people surrounding me that understand when I don't have time, you know, it's because I'm trying to chase these goals. No, I don't want to go out tonight because I honestly need some sleep. Mm -hmm. Right, right. (laughs) I haven't slept in about three days, you know, and so please don't be mad. But if it's somebody that you feel like you have to lie to about your journey or what you're doing, why you don't have time for them, again, that may not be the right people to be in your circle. Because the best is going to understand that we all hustling. We all tired and we're all chasing our dreams. So, you know, when you have time, you will make time. And then that runs right into the meetings that value your purpose. Everybody doesn't deserve your time. Mm -hmm. Which is hard for us to say sometimes. Yeah. And you say it in a nice way, but in your mind, you know, the truth, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but you, you say it very, you know, um, diplomatically that, you know, just at this moment, maybe let's catch up next month. You, if, if somebody gets mad, you know, people just think you're so busy and, oh, you just think you're too much and you don't have time for people if I say next month, but honestly, my schedule has been mapped out maybe for five months. You know, so you you can't be upset that I have a fundraiser to go to on Monday. I have a workshop to go to on Tuesday. I have a speaking engagement on Wednesday. Thursday, I'm flying out. I'm in Georgia for the next three days. When I get back, I got to go to this high school and do that. You know, so they have to understand that when you're walking in your purpose like that, you are truly going to be busy. But, you know, meetings that value your purpose is something that you allow yourself to not waste time on people who should not really be within your circle. And I'm so glad you have a friend like your friend who who told you that you're doing the right thing and she's not holding anything against you. Because even if you just have, it's great to have a group of people, but even if you have at least that one person who Mm -hmm. understands you and who can support you, that's so valuable. So everybody needs to have that as well. Exactly. And even a friend, I have a girlfriend, Letitia, who actually just sent me a message today, just a text message, very simple. Hey girl, just checking on you. That made mm-hmm. my day, you know, yes. so it's like I haven't talked to her. We have a group chat where all of us say all kinds of crazy and reckless things and it's hilarious. But <laughs> sometimes I'm not in there for a couple of weeks. Like you said, mm-hmm. they just know and they just check on me once in a while. So I totally understand that. I felt that when you said that. And I love that, you know, I, and I take the time to do that. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a quick, hey, just sending love and encouragement your way, hoping all is well, you know, and you never know. Like I did it to a friend last week. And I hadn't talked to him and he was like, oh, my goodness, I needed this so much. Mm -hmm. I was just laid off by my job, Mm -hmm. you know, and you never know what somebody is going through. So when that spirit hits you, reach out, you know, and be able to be there for that person. That doesn't mean that, you know, we have to be together for two, three hours right now. Just a simple, hey, how you doing is enough. That's right. All right. Rule number seven is another favorite. Envision it, plan it, execute it. Be an executor and not an announcer. Don't make excuses, create (laughs) solutions. So you mentioned the announcer thing earlier. Tell us what that means. Uh, So this is one of my favorite things because I just feel it every single day. Um, We live in a world of social media where everybody is making these announcements, but they lack the follow through. And they're posting and they're sharing things, but then you don't hear anything about it later. And so when I say don't be an announcer, be an executor, I I really think that most people that make as many announcements as they do, their bank account does not reflect the work that they act like they're putting in. Mm. And we need to work smarter and not harder. Like you need to be able to be bringing in checks for your business, growing your business, bringing in new clientele. And if you're too busy making announcements, then I really don't see how you're putting the work in. Um, it's just like my friends and everybody thinks I'm such a lame because I don't have like a Snapchat and all of these other social medias. I'm, I'm like, it's hard enough maintaining Instagram and Facebook, right. you know, and I don't even want to do that. Same here. Focus. <laughs> but I do it because of my business and why I'm not posting personal things on there is because 
my business, I am my brand. So my social media is all about my brand. It's all about my business. And it's so much about business that I have a reminder on certain days, um, a, a calendar reminder at 9 p.m. to post. I do. <gasps> Me too. <laughs> Otherwise, forget it. It'll be days. I promise it will never happen. <laughs> never I, I will never be on there. And then, you know, other people also get upset because, you know, speaking of the announcers, I share and I do congrats and hearts all over social media but also when i when i get that text message to post i mean that that calendar reminder to post i post and i get off Mm -hmm. you know because i got emails to send i got things to plan i got people to follow up with and i do not need to be distracted by social media so yes i i encourage people to envision it one because you have to have the imagination that you can even accomplish what you're trying to accomplish to plan it because if you don't have a plan then you're just an announcer again you're just talking about what you're going to do but if you don't have the plan you won't know the steps that are necessary to get you to that next level and then execute it a plan is nothing without execution and many of us lack the execution like i said we have these awesome ideas and these great dreams but we're not willing to put the work in to execute it because it's a lot of work Mm -hmm. and that scares people. And that's why most people don't plan it. <laughs> right. Because when they do plan it, they see all of this that has to go into getting there. Oh, never mind. I'll revisit it next year. I'll, I'll come back to it in six months. And then somebody comes out with your same idea. And you got the nerve to be mad. Exactly. That's the thing. Once that idea is out there in the universe floating around, if not you, it'll be somebody else. Exactly. So then it goes back to the if not me then who better, you Mm -hmm. know, stop being, stop procrastinating on these dreams, these goals and these business ideas and start bringing them to life. Stop feeling like you don't have enough to do it. You know, just start to do it. I never thought, you know, starting my business four years ago, I would then create a brand called Everyday Entrepreneur that promotes entrepreneurship that then birthed the book called How to Be an Entrepreneur One-on-One that also allowed me to then become a filmmaker, which is something that I've always wanted to do, you know, and I would not be here if I was still sitting in that job that I was unhappy in. Right. You know, so you have to envision it, plan it and execute it. Don't worry about making announcements to make other people feel like you're important. You're going to shine once you start walking in that purpose. And just being yourself and learning what it is that you love to do and that you're passionate about. And then how can you make your passion your paycheck as far as your business is concerned? Now, tell us about your film. That was something that I meant to ask you about earlier. Tell us about that project, how that came to be and the result of it. So the film is pretty, pretty. um, How it came is just it's just amazing. So. I've always wanted to be a filmmaker and again, talking about it and and speaking it into existence and letting people know what you want to do. I had a good friend named Troy Pryor who um, I did some light consulting with him on his organization, Creative Cypher. And I, you know, I told him I wanted to be a filmmaker. I want to get my feet in the game. I want to get my feet wet. I want to get in the game. And, you know, this is something that I want to do. And so I don't know, months, at least six months, maybe even a year later, um, Angela McRae, who is an awesome filmmaker in L.A., she was working on this film called Hashtag Where is Beauty? And so um, she asked Troy, did she did he know anybody who was interested in coming on board as an executive producer and helping close out, you know, the finishing touches on the film and allow them to get ready for the film festival circuits and things of that nature. And so Troy put us on an email and um, I replied and I said, oh, my goodness, I would love to become a part of your film and being the executive producer. I'm not I'm not necessarily, you know, producing just yet, but it's a way for me to get my feet wet and I would love to do it. What do I need? And so um, they needed twenty five hundred dollars for the executive producer. And honestly, I didn't have it at the time, but I said, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, okay, you know, we're, then count me in. I will be your executive producer. And lo and behold, I was going to LA the next month. And I said, when I get there, I will have a check for you. 
And I put in the work with clientele and um, other people that I knew that I was working with to make sure that by the time I had that trip in L.A., I had the twenty five hundred dollars. You committed and to making the money before you had the money because you knew yes, the intention. I did. Right. Yes, I did. I committed to making it before I had it. It's just like Jim Carrey talks about writing himself that million dollar check. Right. Ten you know? million, and I think. Oh, I think, yeah, I think it was 10 million. Yeah. And, and then he had just closed his first big movie deal mm -hmm. around the date that he put on it. And so I committed to it and I, I knew that I needed to hustle to get it. And I knew that it was something I really wanted to do. So I made it happen. I got to L.A. Um, I had the check for her and I was now the executive producer of an amazing short film called Hashtag Where's Beauty. And what's amazing about it is that it was an all-women's film. Everybody that worked on the project were women. And it's about women loving themselves in a world of social media standards. And um, it was so relevant. And it's starring Guapale, mm -hmm. the amazing singer closer to my dreams that everybody knows her for. And she's actually um, the fellow executive producer with me. So who would have thought my very first short film would be, you know, featured in about 15 film festivals from France to Canada to L.A. to Atlanta to New York to Chicago, starring an amazing singer. And that was her acting debut. And just to be as powerful as it was. I never thought that can happen, you know, but it was something that I wanted. I spoke it into the universe and it allowed to take place. And the dream is, I think Oprah says that God can dream of a bigger dream for you than you could ever imagine. Oh, so you did yes. have the dream, but then, as you said, it just kept um, increasing, magnifying, if you will, over yes, time. Yes, indeed. Excellent. It started with you telling the person you were working with that this was one of your dreams, and then it comes together eventually as you continue to do the work. I love it. And and I wasn't even doing anything, you know, in that, in that type of arena yet. Right. But it happened because it was something that when when we talk about allowing yourself to to drift out and start something that you want to do but you may not be able to do just yet I think one of my my word not one of my words my word and theme for the year is about possibilities and really um, mm. encouraging people to have a possibility mindset is something I've been talking a lot about this year and plan to do more of but this is a perfect example of that you believed in the possibility you didn't know exactly as you said how big or even how it was going to happen as I always say let go of the how but you believed in the possibility. You knew you wanted to do it and it was going to come together somehow. Somehow, one day. Some I didn't way. know when. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. But it happened. And I'm just so happy. Um, something I, I, I really stick by is that um, the dream is free. The hustle is sold separately. Mm. Mm -hmm. You could dream all day long. But if you don't have the hustle to back it up, it won't happen. And although I didn't have the money at the time, I made sure I had it in order to get what I wanted to do. That's right. So now do you plan to do um, produce other films? Yes. Yes. I am um, currently working on a documentary about black entrepreneurship um, with my great friend, Tanika Carpenter. And um, I'm doing a documentary on CPS and I have another short film that I'm working on. So I am focusing on films this year, 2018. And it, it allowed me to <laughs> talk about, you know, just doing the work for planning. Now is not only my only business, I have Ford Media. And Ford Media is the avenue as to which the films and the documentaries are being released under. So tell us the businesses that, you you know, they say most successful entrepreneurs have at least seven streams of income, right? And you know it. You know it. I got my, in my <laughs> journal, girl. You know it. So what are your, so tell us your, the companies that you current, or businesses that you currently have. So yes, um, and it's, it's, it's the average millionaire, Elaine, has seven sources average of income. Average millionaire. So I am chasing that million dollar dream. I will be a millionaire one day. We and don't doubt it. I have confidence in saying it. I think that so many people are afraid to even think about that. And that's something else we need to change our mindsets around. Mm -hmm. But um, I have a family of Ford. <laughs> so the Ford family consists of Ford Planning, which is the consulting and management company. Ford Media, which is the um, film platform. And then I have a nonprofit organization called Ford Change CDC. 
And so that is allowing me to do what I've always wanted to do while I even got the public administration master's is be able to give back to the community by way of program services and initiatives. And so those are my three. I have um, four more to go. But um, I believe that they will come in due time and it's okay to to just focus on, you know, allowing these three to be successful as they can be. And then everything else will just fall into place. But then you're also an author, as we talked about. So you Very also have true. Your books. Thank yes. you. So I do have four. Yes. I forgot about the books. Yes, you're also an author. And you, what's Everyday Entrepreneur? I heard you mention that earlier. Is that- yeah, so Everyday Entrepreneur is the brand um, that promotes, it's the lifestyle brand that promotes entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, so thank you, mm-hmm. girl, look, Two and then you, you, you do so much, you forget. You forget, you know? exactly. That's the other thing. You're like, okay, what else do I do? Exactly. So yes, I do have five. Um, mm-hmm. Everyday Entrepreneur is the lifestyle brand that promotes entrepreneurship. Under it, I sell t-shirts, wristbands. Oh, yeah, um, I didn't even know all that. Yeah, so it's all on my website. It's AllisonRenee.com. Um, and you will be able to see, you know, that it is the Everyday Entrepreneur shirt and then a chapter. I released a T-shirt for every chapter of the book as well. Um, so those rules that you like and those chapters that you like, there are T-shirts correlated with it. And Everyday Entrepreneur actually has a planner on the way for entrepreneurs Mm. so it will be released at the end of this year um and it is the what i like to say it is going to be your one-stop shop for all of your planning needs you will you know writing that to-do list putting those clients in there scheduling things um just parking lots because we have so many ideas and we don't know where to put them so there's a section just for the parking lot where you put things that you want to do but it may not be time to do it right now and um It came from my one year anniversary of forward planning. Oh, my goodness, girl. I realized I was so tired. (laughs) (laughs) I realized I had literally been working 365 days nonstop Mm. because I was working Monday through Sunday. I was doing I was up at 2 a.m. sending emails. I was up at back up at 8 a.m. getting ready for meetings. I was doing so many different things and it just was something where I wanted to let people know that no entrepreneurship is not easy, but it is worth it. And um, every single day I'm hustling every day. I'm trapping because trapping is the middle word of entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so every day I have to be this entrepreneur and there's no cold switch. There's no turn off, no turn on. I need to be prepared and be ready every single day. So it was the lifestyle brand. Um, I kicked off a a vlog with it. First a blog and then it turned into a vlog where I interviewed different entrepreneurs in the city of Chicago and just being allowing them to um, share their stories and how can we support their brands. And actually, it started off as a podcast. Oh, did it? Actually, it did. It started off as a podcast. My one year anniversary, I released my first episode, which was with Krishan Lampley, who is a great friend of mine. She is a black vintner and she owns um, a wine company called Love Corkscrew. Hmm. And so um, I had her on my first episode of the podcast and, and, you know, we were just talking about the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. And then I was writing at the same time because I love to write. I'm such a writer. Um, So I was blogging about entrepreneurship. And then most recently last year, you know, the world is going to video. So I started doing vlogs and interviews with people, you know, just entrepreneurs in the city. So that is um, a great, great source of income. So that's number four, the Everyday Entrepreneur brand. And then number five is me being an author. Um, How to Be an Entrepreneur 101, Imagination and Discipline, came out last May. I released it on my grandmother's birthday, who had passed away six months before. Um, She was my queen. She was my everything. And it was dedicated to her. So that was the first book. I do have a second book that I'm working on. Um, It's called Speaking Into Existence, Mm -hmm. The Four Perspective. Um, And then next year, I'm supposed to be releasing another book. um, And it's called 23 Ways to Hustle. And so I'm giving, I gave you how to be an entrepreneur. And now I'm giving you different avenues and different entrepreneurial 
roles that you can take on to be successful that allows you to connect your passion to your paycheck. Awesome. So those last two absolutely are their own <laughs> businesses and entities. Yes. So, so I only glad. got two more to go. That's two more great. to go. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so in closing, Allison, if you think over your life and career and you had the chance to thank only one person whose support was critical to you personally or professionally, who would that be and what would you say? Oh, that's so awesome. Um, it would have to be my mother. My mother is um, amazing. She she did think I was crazy when I first quit my job. Mm-hmm. She did think I was crazy because mm-hmm. um, I was I was twenty three. I was making like seventy thousand. Great income, great life, all of these things. And um, she thought I was crazy. But when I did start for planning, her support was unwavering. I mean, from the launch party to the one year anniversary to the book launch. Um, my biggest supporter, my biggest investor, because her, her money has helped for planning many of days. Um, you know, when clients are not able to pay on time, I work with a lot of nonprofits. And so they're affected by so many different things. And if they're not able to pay me on time, but I still have staff um, that I need to pay, you know, and I need to say, hey, ma, is it are you are you able to help me out this month? I just need to borrow couple of hundred dollars into the 15th you know and I get a nice speech about it Mm -hmm. but (laughs) she definitely always comes through you know and and whether it's you I'm out of town or it's something that I need to get done while I'm that's here she comes through for me and she handles sometimes business for me and she's going to be she is the person that we are cultivating the nonprofit with um, so she will be working for the nonprofit full time and again, building that, helping me build that generational wealth that we need for our family. And I just want to say thank you. I don't know any words. I tell you almost every day, every night, every week, there are no words to explain how grateful I am for you and how thankful I am to have you in my life because I wouldn't be the woman I am today for planning wouldn't be the business it is today and I just know that without her being able to show me how to continue to move forward despite the odds that are set against you I would not be as successful as I am today as an entrepreneur awesome perfect that's beautiful I'm sure she'll appreciate that or does appreciate that since you tell her often Yes, she's gonna she's gonna show everybody at the office though when this goes online. <laughs> <laughs> so now tell us what are the ways that we can support you. Give us your website again and spell it for people. I'll have links to everything, of course, but how they can get in touch with you and find out more about what you're up to. Yes, yeah, so I am on social media at it's Allison Renee. So that's I T S A L L Y S O N. R E N E E. It's Allison Renee. That happens to also be my personal brand for my website. So it's AllisonRenee.com. I do have a website for forward planning, and that is forwardplanninginc.com. And then I have a website for the book if you would like to purchase the book or purchase t shirts. And this is the same website the planner will be sold on. It is how to be one. O1.com. So that's H O W T O B E 101.com. Excellent. Allison, thank you so much. This was so great. So much fun, too. And like I said, I loved your book and just everything that you're up to, all of the additional things that I didn't even know about that you're up to. <laughs> that I know you're going to be super successful and just keep going and let us know if there's anything else we can do to support you. Yes, support is sexy. And I thank you for creating this podcast and just giving us an avenue as women entrepreneurs. And you let me know if there's ever anything that you need. And just keep up the great work, Elaine. We need more people like you. Oh, thank you so much. Now, before you go, what's a parting piece of advice from you to our listeners about anything? Um, A part, some parting advice that I would give is to just be yourself. Learn what it is that makes you happy, enjoy it, and then find ways to make money doing it. 
when I first came out with my business, I was so busy trying to be accepted by other people. I was blazered up, buttoned down because I was 24 years old and I wanted people to take me seriously. And years later, I realized that I lost a part of me because I felt like I needed to be accepted by other people. Don't be accept. Don't feel the need to be accepted by other people. Build your brand, build your business. And I promise everybody else will fall into place. You know, one of my favorite people is Issa Rae. Issa Rae. Uh -huh. Yes, she is so herself. It makes no sense. And I just love it. And sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I could be like her. I still don't have the balls to just be out there and <laughs> and be willing to be as goofy and 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 um and interesting as I am online and on social media. But if you ever doubt it, you know, loving yourself or loving the skin you're in or being able to be successful in what it is you want to do, I think she is an amazing person to look at and understand that it's okay to be yourself. Just do it. Create that business. Be who you want to be and the success will follow. Excellent. Allison, thank you so much. Hold on for a second. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Allison. To find out more about her, about forward planning, about everything that she's up to, go to supportissexypodcast.com. Go to that search icon at the top and just type in Allison, A-L-L-Y-S-O-N. Her show notes page will pop up with all of the links, the resources, the ways to get her book and the way to get in touch with her. Supportissexypodcast.com. And just search Allison, A-L-L-Y-S-O-N. Now, again, if you are a woman entrepreneur who wants to get your story and your message out there, consider podcast guesting. And I want you to download my free gift on how to be an unforgettable podcast guest. Just go to girlonpodcastgift.com girlonpodcastgift.com, a free guide on how to be an unforgettable podcast guest for all the right reasons. All right, so thank you so much for being here. You know I appreciate you. As I always say, it would not be the same without you. If you love this episode, I'd love to hear what you think. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening. Either way, I'm happy to have you. I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow or whenever you listen to the next episode. Until then, though, always remember, you deserve support. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care.